are called electromyographic signals. The signals are picked up by electrodes planted on the skin. Uh, the electrodes basically look like this. They're tiny little pads, much like you have in a doctor's office. So if she said the future out loud... The future. We have the signal that's corresponding to that muscular activity. But with subvocal speech, she doesn't have to move her mouth. She could say that word silently. So she would say the future silently. Here she said the future, but she didn't move her lips. And you can see that there is still the same signal being picked up by the electrodes underneath her throat. Once the electrodes capture the signal, they can be transmitted, as if through a cell phone, to someone with an earpiece receiver. In Chicago, Illinois, a world authority on microwave hearing shows how it could work. I'm hearing a microwave pulse like a click. Now it sounds like a, a chirp with a tonal quality to it. Professor James Lin is hearing sounds that aren't there, but he's not crazy. Pulses of microwave energy are being generated and fired at him from behind. Microwaves can be heard depending on the individual, uh, depending on the hearing acu acuity of the individual. Individuals with uh, fairly normal hearing can hear microwaves at a quite a low level. The energy of the absorbed microwaves causes brain tissue to very slightly heat up and expand, causing a pressure wave to be picked up by the hearing mechanism in the inner ear. Professor Lin is far from hearing voices, but it could be possible to send coded signals to an agent this way. Brain is an electrical organ. Uh, it is uh, susceptible to electrical signals since microwave is electrical therefore in principle one could uh, embed or encode information in the microwave hello everybody the general subject has been discussed and experimentation have been conducted based on that. Nikola Tesla did develop um, his technologies which are literally based on static electricity and they define the propagation of waves which are um, created via Tesla coils and as radio engineers, you all know that your world is based on the electromagnetic wave. That is the waves which we all know today, how our radio works, how our communication system works, how broadcast works. Literally everything is based on electromagnetic waves, which is a retarded wave. That means it is always slower than the speed of light. And there's another wave which is by many not accepted to be existing. However, it has been proven more than once that it exists and it exists in the nature all over the place. And I want to conduct today some experiments to show you that it exists and what kind of application we can use to benefit from it. Here we have our normal setup. Um, well, you will see I have a little additional application or tool here in between. It's called a spectrum analyzer. Um, it's an analog tool. It's not very precise. Um, however, it gives me some indications. It goes up to one gigahertz or can measure up to microwave uh, wa wavelengths and so on. I have at the moment tuned the TMT um, to its main frequency, so it's 181 um, kilohertz. So it's the first. Um, um, peak is here at 180, it should point out 0.1. So that is at the moment at the division at 0.2, so that means each division here replicates 200 kilocycle. And we have 10 of them, so there's 2 mega cycle literally of the board, what you can see. I have sine wave um, applied. This little 
setup here will be my proof case. So there are two metal boxes, cake boxes to be precise, and we have a little radio here. So what I'm supposed to do with this radio, I show you electromagnetic waves and I think you all know what it means if we use a Faraday, Faraday cage and put a radio inside a Faraday cage we will not get any reception anymore. Why is that? The Faraday cage is based on a construction like a mesh or it can be a container, a metal container. What it does, the mesh structure has a length and the transverse magnetic field propagation has a wavelength. So when the mesh is smaller than the wavelengths of the transverse magnetic radiation, the field is shielded. So, so good so far. If you have a metal container, the mesh becomes all of a sudden um, a width of the molecule or atom length. That means in order to penetrate um, metal container I would go would have to use a frequency on a subatomic level if we propagate by a transverse magnetic um, radiation. So far so good. I think the, the setup of the Tesla coil. Let's now start with showing you what it means to put the system a radio here from a radio transmitter um, receiving a broadcast from radio station what it means to put it in a in a shield environment or so called faraday cage just we're in Edinburgh, so here the radio is now tuned to a radio station and tell us up as loud as you can I put it inside the container you can hear already the reception gets lower and lower i mean i close the lid now sound is gone you hear only static we're gonna do that shielded so that's a so-called a nested faraday cage a nested faraday cage is literally a faraday cage inside a faraday cage to make it a little bit more tough put that here and put this one on top there is no reception anymore so this radio is dead there is no way you can receive any radio signal. Now, is there a system available which allows you under that condition to receive a radio signal? The answer is yes, of course there is. A far superior system which can transmit through the ground, which can go to concrete, which can be inside a Faraday cage, it does not matter. It penetrates at all. And why is that? So I'm talking about so-called scalar waves. I'm talking about longitudinal waves. And what has not been defined so far is there have been a lot of videos around that subject. Eric Dollard, you'll find on my website a couple of videos from Eric Dollard where he explains that with a rope, with a piece of rope, when you pull that, there's also an explanation. If you look at the tsunami wave, a tsunami wave is literally a longitudinal wave. So if you look at, uh, at our solenoid coil, we have the electromagnetic propagation, which is a wave which on the water, it was explained, is going up. And then you have the magnetic wave, which goes 90 degree lacking um, in the same direction. So you have literally 90 degree opposite phase. You have electric and magnetic or current running. Now, there's a third component, and the third component is the scalar wave, which literally runs inside the solenoid coil from the beginning to the end, forward and backward. It is a so-called pressure wave. So, it runs from here to here. It literally pushes out on both sides, and that is actually outside our that helps out at our space because the propagation is not transverse, it is longitudinal, there's literally a point reference which is so sharp and so 
detailed that anything else cannot compare to it, like laser beams or whatever you want to call it. Nothing can be as precise as that, and because it's not transverse transmitted, there is no re uh, retard um, propagation. I'm talking about the speed. Propagation of transverse um, magnetic fields, as we all know, is below the speed of light. But because of the longitudinal wave and a different wave, because it doesn't need any time to reach from the beginning to the end, it is faster than the constant the speed of light. We, and I have to refer here to Professor Wheatstone, that is pi over 2 times c. That's 290,000 miles per second. I will not go to the subject amount that, that will be part of my professional part of research and development to deal with it. But what I can show you is how we can define that it's work. We have a sine wave actually running through. So that is, and without any filters, that is what you have, have at the moment. Of course, when I touch it a bit, it will get a little bit more. And you see also here's a form here on the scope. Now let me change that to a square wave. Look at that. Now we get an extremely strong signal and beautiful harmonics. All the octaves. Look at that. That's tremendous. Now if I change it back to sine wave. Gone. So that should now give you an indication why we have to use pulsed waves. There's much more energy, much more energy in the system. Okay, let's go back. Now let's go to the frequency modulation. I have added now frequency modulation. As you can see here, looks very very nice on a on the um, spectrum analyzer. So the frequency, of course, the modulation changed, as you can see here. Um, it's much higher. And also the octave. So I have set the radio at the moment to 181. I can say to 182. Normal radius here. Let me put this up in the plastic bag. And let's go to 187. Okay, let's put it in here. Let's put this one in here. Close the file the cage. Make still a hell of noise. Let's put it in here. Makes still a hell of a noise. And I can tell you, I can go out in the garden now, I can walk away from the house, and I still receive that signal. At the end of my garden, about 20 meters away, I can still hear the signal. 